Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Glendale High School's 111th Annual Oratorical. My name is Janet Louie, and I'm your ASB president for the 2019-2020 school year. We are here today to continue a noble tradition celebrating unity, honor, and school spirit. I would like to thank everyone for joining us today, including our panel of distinguished judges, community members, and honored guests. Oratorical is not only a unique class competition, but a one-of-a-kind opportunity for young leaders to collaborate and inform one another about an important issue facing our country today, and to inspire their peers to take action in our community. I hope the words spoken and the images presented today stay with you all beyond the auditorium. The classes have worked hard to articulate their views and their presentations, and I wish you all good luck. Now, please face the flag, put your right hand over your heart, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Your, Your presidents will now see you in order of presentation. Now, I would like to introduce our Director of Visual and Performing Arts, Stefan Karpetin. Oratorical is the oldest and longest running annual tradition at Glendale High School. This tradition began during a time where forensics and speech arts were popular throughout Southern California. The first oratorical was held on April 28, 1909 at the Harvard Street site, which is now the location of the Glendale Public Library. Originally, each class decorated booths that carry out the theme of their speech, but in 1923, Tableau was added to the competition. Today, 111 years later, Oratorical's four class competitions are an original speech, a tableau carrying out the theme of the speech, the discipline of the class, and the spirit, which includes two cheers and the song Glendale voice. The order of presentation today will be the juniors, followed by the freshmen, then the seniors, and finally the sophomores. The prompt this year is Gun violence in America has increased considerably in recent years, renewing the debate over how to balance the right to own a gun and the need to ensure public safety. Many states have enacted laws that place some restrictions on the Second Amendment. What limitations, if any, should be added on gun ownership in America? Now it is time for four classes to compete. I would like to introduce the president of the junior class, Kayla Rodriguez. The class of 2021 would like to present our speaker, Arako Arugian, with the speech entitled, Are We Next?
Bodies strewn across the floors, bullet holes in the walls, blood splattered on the survivors' faces, and the chilling sound of dozens of phones ringing, never to be answered again. This was the aftermath of the June 12, 2016 Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida. 49 deaths. 49 people lost their lives at the hands of one sick man with two guns. 49 people walked into a club to have the time of their lives, but were brutally murdered. The Orlando massacre was a heart-shattering scene, and the tragedy, at its time, was the deadliest mass shooting in American history. 49 people slaughtered, but efforts to reduce gun violence, including restrictions on gun ownership, were rejected because of overwhelming opposition from the National Rifle Association. Since then, countless examples of gun violence have continued to occur across the nation. Homicides, suicides, school shootings, and mass shootings. Gun violence levels have risen by a national average of 41% since 1968, with nearly 40,000 deaths in 2017. It is clear there needs to be a change. People are dying, and not enough is being done to stop it. We need a new, better solution, one that would end gun violence. With various ideas and opinions on how to act on this issue, it is hard to believe that some truly think the solution is arming everyone. They believe the most effective way to stop an active shooter is to have a gun. They believe that with guns, people would have a means of protecting themselves and eliminating the threat before a disaster. They believe the playing field would be leveled. But would it? Would giving every man, woman, and child a gun ensure their safety from those willing to do them harm? This would mean that every malicious person would also have a gun. That every person with vicious, sadistic intentions would have access to a weapon that allows them to commit acts of violence. That anyone and everyone in the wrong headspace can use a firearm to hurt themselves or others. This sounds appalling. But this is the direction in which our country is headed. There have been real proposals to arm teachers in schools, and some have even argued to arm everyone. But the solution to gun violence is not making access to guns easier. After horrific shootings in Norway, New Zealand, and Australia, gun legislation was passed to stop future gun-related attacks. Now, all of these countries have extremely low gun violence rates, with Norway having one of the lowest homicide rates in all of Europe. But despite new instances of gun violence occurring each day, the United States refuses to do the same, seeming to prioritize the right to bear arms over the safety of its own people. Our government needs to realize that the answer to gun violence is not to loosen regulations, or to increase ownership, but to do the very opposite. Increase regulations such as strict, frequent background checks and complete bans on high-capacity magazines need to be established to make guns less accessible and prevent needless deaths. Consistent mental health checks on gun owners will prevent guns from getting into the hands of people who are not stable enough to handle them. America has been too passive on the issue of gun violence. The Constitution has to change with the needs of the country. And right now, our country needs stricter gun control laws to keep us safe. The United States has the highest rate of death by firearms among developed countries, and there's no sign of it slowing down. How many more people need to die? How many before our country takes drastic measures against gun ownership? 21 years ago, it was Columbine. Thirteen years ago, it was Virginia Tech. Seven years ago, it was Sandy Hook. And just months ago, it was Saugus High School. As students, we continue to hear about these tragedies and wonder, are we next?
The class of 2021 proudly presents the three G's. The class of 2021 proudly presents the Power Yell. The class of 2021 proudly presents Glendale Boys. I would now like to introduce the president of the freshman class, Nanor Ghazaryan. The class of 2023 proudly presents our speaker, Nikita Ambatipudi, with the speech entitled, The Preventable Epidemic. We knew exactly what we had to do. The message roared from the announcement system. 
The door was yanked shut and swiftly locked. The lights were quickly shut off. An eerie silence took over the classroom as we hid in the darkest corners of the room, away from all windows and doors. For us, this lockdown situation was a drill, one of the many that we participate in each year. But for students at countless other schools in the United States, it was not. And perhaps most disappointing of all, school shootings are only one aspect of the gun violence epidemic in our country. In recent years, gun violence in America has increased considerably. 36,000 Americans are killed by guns each year. We can't allow this to go on. We need to establish national gun laws. We need to implement a ban on all assault weapons. We need to put a stop to this epidemic. The only way to truly ensure gun safety in the United States is to establish national gun laws. Currently, states like Arizona and Vermont have extremely lenient gun laws, while states like California and New Jersey have more rigid laws. This unequal system creates serious problems. No clear and effective federal statute currently exists to prohibit gun trafficking. So people can easily buy guns in less restrictive states and bring them into other states. By establishing national gun laws, we can ensure that the policies to purchase firearms are uniform across all states. Along with failing to standardize national gun laws, the United States has failed to implement universal background checks. Unlicensed gun sellers in the U.S. still do not have to perform background checks on prospective firearm owners. 80% of all firearms acquired for criminal purposes are obtained through unlicensed sellers. And despite the fact that a majority of the American public supports universal background checks, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen because the NRA does not back this policy. Lawmakers refuse to stop accepting funds from the NRA because they need that money to get elected. The NRA represents only 1.6% of the population, yet lawmakers prioritize them over the safety of the rest of us. We need universal background checks and national regulation to keep people safe. We need to put a stop to this epidemic. We also need to implement a ban on all assault weapons. 22 dead in El Paso, 49 dead at the Pulse nightclub, 58 dead in the Las Vegas Strip Massacre. What do these deadly mass shootings have in common? Assault weapons. These destructive firearms have been the cause of numerous deaths in the United States. And if we do not implement a national assault weapon ban immediately, that number will continue to rise significantly. There is absolutely no reason for ordinary people to have access to these types of weapons. When the Second Amendment was passed in 1791, it was meant as a way for Americans to protect themselves. Times were different then, and assault weapons had not been invented. As a result, the Second Amendment should not cover having access to these lethal weapons. Allowing the public to possess these types of firearms does more harm than good. People can still keep their regular handguns, but deadly assault weapons must be taken off the streets. We need to put a stop to this epidemic. Columbine. Parkland, The Pulse nightclub, Las Vegas, Virginia Tech, the movie theater in Aurora, El Paso, San Bernardino, Saugus, Sandy Hook. Lawmakers have done nothing, but we have not forgotten. And we will not let them forget until something gets done. If I sound indignant, it's because I am. This is about us, our families, our friends, our school, our community, and our country. The power lies with us. We must demand results now.
The class of 2023 proudly presents the three Gs. The class of 2023 proudly presents the Power Yell. The class of 2023 proudly presents Glendale Boys. I would like to introduce the president of the senior class, Ani Antonian. The class of 2020 proudly presents Ella Wasson with the speech entitled, Dear Alyssa. Dear Alyssa, it's Valentine's Day, a day full of love, chocolates, and flowers. For me, it is more than that now. Last Valentine's Day was the last time I saw you. Mothers know, 
Intuition prevails. Mine came as soon as someone told me there'd been a shooting at school. I knew you were gone. On February 14, 2018, a shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, took the lives of 17 people. One victim was 14-year-old Alyssa Alhadef. A year after her death, Alyssa's mother penned an open letter to her daughter, sharing her grief and resolve to effect change. Alyssa was just one of an estimated 15,000 gun homicide victims in the U.S. in 2018. Despite the efforts of several states to regulate gun ownership, mass shootings continue to rise. Since the writing of the Second Amendment, both America and guns themselves have changed greatly. Further restrictions on weapons, as well as their owners, will enhance the safety of Americans everywhere. Gun activists often cite the Second Amendment as their basis for opposing increased regulations. But this amendment was written 200 years ago with the intent of allowing citizens to protect themselves from a tyrannical government. The Founding Fathers could have never envisioned the terrifying epidemic that is sweeping our nation. In 1787, a musket could fire just three rounds per minute in the hands of an expert user. Today, a teenager with an AR-15 can fire upwards of 400 rounds per minute. The capabilities of firearms have changed exponentially since the American Revolution, but our legislation surrounding them has not properly adapted. Gun control varies from state to state, making it almost impossible to enforce federal regulations. Here in California, we have some of the strictest gun laws, but in a state like Kentucky, Background checks are almost never required, and there is no firearms registration process. Regulations work. In the United States, California has one of the lowest gun mortality rates, while Kentucky's is twice as high. Yet even with our strict regulations, Saugus High School, just 40 minutes from Glendale, experienced a mass shooting last November. More remains to be done. Although it may sound alluring to take guns out of the hands of every individual, it is just not feasible. Whether we like it or not, guns are ingrained in American culture. Implementing coherent legislation will require compromise from those who cherish their Second Amendment rights and those who've experienced tragedy at the hands of gun violence. Fortunately, a simple model already exists that provides a framework for this compromise, the regulation of cars. Like a gun, a car has the potential to take many innocent lives, and as a nation, we have recognized this. We require every car to be registered. We require all drivers to be knowledgeable on vehicle operations. We require every driver to obtain a license. So why do we not treat guns with the same caution? In theory, all guns are supposed to be registered, and all buyers are supposed to undergo background checks. However, such regulations fail due to gaps within our laws, such as the gun show loophole, permitting anyone to walk into a gun show, purchase a firearm, and avoid a background check. Closing this loophole and requiring proper firearms licensing must be the next step in creating effective gun legislation. How many more people need to lose their lives before our nation takes action? Our generation should not be scared to go to school. We should not be scared to go to concerts or practice our religion. Behind every statistic is a real person. A daughter, a son, a friend. Our parents have lost their children. We need to ensure that we will not lose ours. Dear Alyssa, I wish I could take all the bullets for you. I just want you back. As I remember you, grief washes over me. But that grief emboldens me to fight for change. Love forever, Mom.
The class of 2020 proudly presents the three Gs. The class of 2020 proudly presents the Power Yell. One, two, The class, the class of 2020, 2020 proudly presents Glendale Boys. I would now like to introduce the president of the sophomore class, Dan Brandon Dornilla. The class of 2022 proudly presents our speaker, Haik Gargaloyan, with the speech entitled, Our Broken System.
Sometimes I wonder, what if I die today? Of course, what's a 16-year-old doing thinking about death? But truly, what if someone were to march into our school, aim one of the most deadly weapons known to man into a crowd of students, and fire? This is a disturbing reality you and I face as American students. Students of a country that has for so long been deemed a global safe haven. Yet, it is in this very safe haven that I find myself posing such a question. I'm sure many of us can remember the November day when we heard about the Saugus High School shooting. We were shocked to find that this time, the victims were just an hour's drive away. That day took cold, hard statistics and turned them into a terrifying reality. As we watched friends and neighbors recover from the tragedy, we quickly sobered up to the fact that it could have been us, that it could have been anyone. Because more than the proximity, what gets to us is the unpredictability. It's the inexplicable, existential feeling of, it could have been me. Not only is Sagas a tragedy, but it's a tragedy that should have been prevented. It's the mark of a broken system, the boyfriend loophole, the gun show loophole, the Charleston loophole. All of these have a common thread. They work around the established laws, rendering them completely useless. As the Saga shooter showed us, anyone could acquire and assemble individual parts into a gun to avoid background checks. This proves that we can't even begin to control guns effectively until we enhance and amend our current laws, closing the loopholes and coordinating practices to ensure that the rules that are in place actually matter. Why must we, the American people, endure crimes that could have been prevented by the very government obligated to protect us. Anyone can throw around the words background check, but numerous loopholes remove any semblance of effectiveness. The gun show loophole means that all one has to do to avoid a firearm is to buy from a private seller, allowing any random person on Craigslist to obtain a firearm with no oversight whatsoever. And even when background checks are involved, their effectiveness is far from guaranteed, as information from individual states and from the military is often left out of federal background check databases. In the interest of forming a more efficient system, we must condense all information into the federal databases, but we must mandate that states use their own databases as well, and that crimes committed after purchasing a firearm are treated as having equal significance to those committed beforehand. Also, when a background check is inconclusive, we need to give the FBI enough time to determine whether someone is a threat to public safety, as opposed to the current three days that are allotted. Moving past background checks, we need to close the boyfriend loophole, in which violence among unmarried couples is regarded as a lesser crime than the very same among married couples. The fact is, those who have displayed violent behavior should not be allowed access to a firearm, as they are far more likely to cause further harm. Whether or not two people are married is completely irrelevant to the topic. In addition, gun parts bought separately and assembled are just as dangerous as physical guns themselves. Therefore, background checks of the same caliber must be placed on all gun parts. Further, guns in the hands of law-abiding citizens who have no intent to harm others are beneficial to the safety of the public, as guns can be just as useful when it comes to stopping crimes. However, good intentions are useless when paired with incompetent handling. Therefore, shooting tests should be mandated to obtain an open carry license. Lastly, there should be a waiting period on all gun purchases, providing time for background checks, as well as ensuring that buying a gun is not a rash decision. Saugus was inarguably a tragedy. Like so many other mass shootings, it was the awful result of ineffective legislation and poor enforcement, which must be the first change we make. Because the thing is, it's not just a gun issue. It's not just a Second Amendment issue, a mental health issue, a public safety issue. It's an issue of the rule of law. It's about making sure that the legislation we produce holds true, because conceptually sound laws have no purpose when their power is undermined by inconsistency. We must not allow ourselves to forget that this government is meant to be for us, for the people. These laws, under the facade of good intention, have failed in upholding the government's obligation to be our protector. As we, the next generation, carry America into the future, we must recognize and advocate for reforms in our legislation that will allow us to achieve a safer tomorrow. A tomorrow in which we can all exist peacefully in our new safe haven without worry of being the next victims of a broken system. Thank you.
The class of 2022 proudly presents the three G's. The class of 2022 proudly presents the Power Yale. Class of 2022 proudly presents Glendale Boys. Now that, now that we've seen see. each of our classes all performing to their very best, I would like to take this time to allow our judges to make their way back to the lobby to collaborate with one another for the final scores. Classes, you are still being judged on discipline, so please maintain your seats. But you may now applaud yourselves for a job well done. While the judges deliberate, I would now like to welcome the a cappella choir to sing Glendale High School Alma Mater.
Will the Will class, class presidents, presidents please join me to thank their speech advisors and coaches? The senior class is very grateful for all the, for all the help that our speech advisor, Mrs. Clark Reed, and that our class advisors, Mr. O'Malley and Mr. Bankovich, provided us. We would like, I would like them to join us on stage today so we can thank them for all their hard work. We couldn't have done it without them. Um, they've been our advisors for four years and Mrs. Clark, has, Ms., she's been our speech advisor for all four years and they're, they're all amazing, so thank you guys. <laughs> On behalf of the class of 2021, I would like to thank our three advisors, Ms. Metropolis, Ms. Goss, and Ms. Tellis for always being there for us, for making these three years oratorical amazing, and next year is gonna be just as amazing. And I would like to thank our speech coach, Ms. Chaudy, for helping us with everything, being there after school to help us with our speech, our speaker, everything, and we could not have done it without her. So we would like to thank her and our advisors. And I would like to call them up on the stage, please. On behalf of the entire sophomore class, we would like to thank our class advisor, Ms. Bedrusi, along with our speech coach, Ms. Postagian. If it was thanks to them that we were able to complete our tableau and have such an amazing speech. So I would like to invite both of them up onto the stage. On behalf of the freshman class, I would like to thank Mrs. Clark Reed, our advisor, and Mrs. Kiefer, our speech coach, even though she isn't here today. They really helped everything go smoothly and just made everything possible, and we really couldn't have done it without them. So thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I would also like to thank JHS stage crew, Mr. Livingston and all ASB members for their hard work, and our amazing judges and guests, uh, the Glendale City Clerk, Andy Kasakian, field representative for Lara Fieldman, Victoria Dochoklian, and former JHS principal, Deb Rinder. Um, I also want to thank our amazing cinematography program for filming all of this. So if anyone missed it, they could watch it later and so I can cringe when I look at myself. Um, and uh, thanks for coming today and celebrating our amazing tradition here at Glendale High School. Thank you very much. Hey, give yourselves a round of applause, all you guys. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys did great. All right, so as they're waiting, we're waiting for a couple, actually, I think the discipline is ready. Okay. Thank you guys so much. You guys did such a great job. You guys should be very proud of everything you did. All right. Okay, so let's hear from discipline. What? Hello, everybody. Pretty, pretty good, pretty good. If I could have everyone's attention in three, two, one. Wow, it's very impressive. 
Well, uh, I want to introduce myself. I'm Officer Lee with the Glendale Police Department. Um, I was one of the judges. Uh, we have Officer Caribbean and Officer Magarino. So we were the uh, three uh, people that were in charge of um, looking for disciplinary um, actions, I guess. But uh, all in all, uh, I want to commend everyone here today. You guys did a fantastic job. And uh, some of the scorers were, were very close. Um, however, I want to introduce uh, the first place winner, which is uh, class of 2021. Okay. Good job, guys. Now, they usually start with like uh, fourth place and on, but you know, why not? Second place is uh, class of 2020. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, juniors. Wow, great job. All right. Amaras, make sure I get all the notes and everything. Get it, make sure I get all the notes and everything. All right. All right. Congratulations. All right, let's bring it back, let's bring it back. I think speech is ready, let's wait for speech. Here comes speech. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Sarah Kleinberg. I'm your teacher specialist, and my co judge is. Hi, my name is Joanne Saltis. I'm uh, not only a graduate of Glendale High School, class of 1987, I taught here in the English department for 10 years and was the class advisor for uh, class of uh, 2000. All right, we truly enjoyed all the speeches by all the classes today. Uh, after deliberation, we would like to share with you that the second place goes to Nikita Amvatipati for the preventable epidemic. And first place in the speech competition goes to Miss Ella Wasson for Dear Alyssa. Congratulations to all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we'll hear from Tableau. All right. I'm Lala Gevorkian, and are we announcing yet? Well, it's introduce everybody first. Okay, and? I'm Savannah Stepanian. <laughs> Artie Ksakian, GHS class of 94. Go ahead, Lala. <laughs> second place first. Okay, for second place we have the junior class.
And first place, we have the senior class. Let's hold it together. All right, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, we have uh, Spirit. Hi, everyone. My name is Victoria Doshogolian, and I represent State Assembly Member Laura Friedman in the city of Glendale and Burbank. Thank you for having us. Sean Sahakian, one of your school board members on the Glendale Unified Board of Education. And I'm Spiro Saltis, and I do the announcing here at Glendale High. I just finished my 34th year as your announcer <laughs> for sports and special events. And so Spirit is right up the alley. So obviously at a football game, the team makes a first down. We move the chains very good then at the basketball game somebody makes a three-point shot it's a and then we're very very proud to have farmers insurance and one of the student athletes that went here is the agent so for all your insurance needs we are farmers you guys got it very good that's spirit that's spirit but add to this long-standing tradition is the discipline, unity, clarity, all the good things, and that goes into this judging. We have some fantastic judges today representing not only the state but the Board of Education and then, of course, the voice of the Nitros. It came down to half points. That's how close it was, so you all deserve a big hand for doing this. But there has to be a winner. So first of all, second place, 2021. <laughs> Champions of Spirit, 2020. I would like to thank all of you for coming out today and joining us. Congratulations to you all for a job well done. This oratorical was our best year yet, and I hope you've enjoyed this very special experience. Mr. Livingston will now dismiss you according to class. Thank you. Yeah. Did you thank everybody? Yeah. All right. So, oh, thank you so much. So first of all, uh, big congratulations to the seniors. You guys won three events. That's amazing, fantastic work. Wasn't quite a sweep, but that's pretty good. Jun juniors, congratulations on discipline. That's great. Congratulations. Sophomores, uh, you guys did great. Congratulations. You should be proud. You guys got a lot of build on, a big group. Let's have all these people come back next time. It's a good group. And freshmen, give yourselves a big round of applause. You guys are amazing back there. Not that many of you, but so good to see you. Thank you so much. All right, so I, I get to let everybody go. So we'll let the juniors go first. Go ahead, juniors. Thank you so much. Hosts, makes, are all the hosts there? Okay.
seniors, you guys can go. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Have a great day. Are we still streaming? <laughs> Freshmen, thank you so much. Have a great one. We'll see you guys next year. Bring more people next time. And sophomores, I wanted to wait till everyone else left. You guys are my favorite. I like you guys best. But don't, but don't tell anybody else, just you. You guys are my favorite. I love you too, but don't, I gotta see other people. Don't tell the freshmen. I just, I love you guys freshmen. You guys are the best. Saltis, do we have all of your like all your notes and everything? The kids have it?